Good morning, Facebook Live. What's happening, everybody? Good morning, good morning. It is Monday morning, 10 a.m. I am in the uh, garden of the restaurant here doing some work. I got my laptop computer here. I have my order guide, and I am placing orders. I've got a bunch of things going on. Uh, this is my office back here for the moment. Beautiful day out so far. Uh, it's supposed to get a little, I guess, cloudy later, like two o'clock or so. So I'm gonna get my, my run in or my bike ride in before that. Um, today's proposed run that I'm thinking of doing, if there's anybody local here and knows Cragsmore, my proposed run today is Vista Maria, up Vista Maria uh, to near uh, the firehouse in Cragsmore and down Clark, back down to the bottom of Clark uh, over on the, uh, the other side in Cragsmore. So, that's today's proposed run. We'll see what happens. Maybe, uh, i got to get out there before it gets too hot. Uh, let's see. Um, this weekend was a, another huge success here in Ellenville. The streets are closed off every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can't say it enough, folks. I just want to keep reminding people that. A lot of people still don't know that, but Friday, Saturday, Sundays, the streets are closed off here. The one block, it is closed, and it is. We all the restaurants are able to. Marcus, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Yeah, uh, no. Just, a, just give me a couple minutes. Give me about 10 minutes. And um, so the streets are closed off. And from the block, the block here, the restaurants put their tables out. The village got a little scared yesterday. They went a little premature. And they, they, they said, open the streets up. It's raining. And I'm looking at the forecast. I'm like, but it's only for a half an hour. And we had just put everything out there. We had just put everything out in the streets. And it was like... Wow, um, now the buses are getting ready to leave. The buses are the barricades, and now we have to bring everything in in the pouring rain. It wasn't fun. And then it turned out to be a beautiful night uh, here in Ellenville. Our garden here was packed. Uh, our front two seats, well, our front, our front one table was packed. We're going to add a new mix into the, um, into the lobster bake this upcoming week, hopefully. I, I don't want to make an announcement yet until I get all the equipment to do it properly, but it is seafood related. I spoke to a couple guests about it and they were so ecstatic. They're like, oh my gosh, Marcus, that would just round this whole lobster bake out. So we do this lobster bake that's 25 bucks. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is from four to nine out on the street. So stay tuned for some more information on that. Uh, today's topic here is I wanted to talk about what not to do right now, unless, unless something else. So we've been getting a lot of great reviews, a lot of great five-star reviews on um, Google. A lot of really great five-star reviews. We got like, I don't know, like 10 new ones in the last two weeks. But there was also two people that gave us two-star reviews, but didn't leave a comment or leave anything, which really doesn't help us. Review sites, um, review sites, can be a very instrumental tool for restaurants, for restaurateurs that are looking at it objectively uh, and that look for, for feedback. So if you go out and give give a restaurant a review, for, first of all, if it's a negative review, if it's a negative review, the, your first step of action should be to let the server know, the wait staff know, the manager know while you're at the restaurant having a bad experience. It doesn't do any good once you leave and then go write a bad review. Because most restaurants, or at least I know I will, rectify the situation if I can while you're here. If you tell me that your steak is overcooked, then we'll get you a new steak. But if you go online and give me a two-star review and say your steak was overcooked and it wasn't any good, it doesn't really reflect, reflect our true service. If you came to me and said, our steak is overcooked, and I said, no, it's not, and still charged you for it, and, and didn't rectify it, then you have, well, then you should, yes, go write a two-star review and said, this, I ordered the steak, it was overcooked, I told management, they didn't seem to care, they didn't listen to me, they argued with me, whatever, they did not fix the problem. And then give them a two-star review. You always give the business an opportunity to, to, to rectify it. Um, I, we have a guarantee on our food. It's a simple guarantee. If, if you're not happy, you're not paying. But I can't do anything once you've left the building and then go online and bash us. So we had two two-star reviews. They left zero feedback. They just left the rating. Um, I think one person might have said they waited an hour for food because their their Waze, W A Z, their 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 GPS. By the time they got back in their car, it was an hour later. This is one thing people don't understand. When you go to a restaurant, you sit down. It takes time for the menus to show up, the waiters or server to show up, the ticket to go in, things like that. And a lot of people judge your experience. Like I've been here a whole hour. Well, you ordered your food only thirty minutes ago, and it's here now. So sometimes people's when your when your blood sugar's off. And I understand this. When your blood sugar's off and you're hungry, when you're hungry things become 
out of proportion. Time frames become out of proportion. We do this exercise with our staff. Uh, a lot of new staff members that come on board. We call it the miracle minute. And we put them in the back room in the, the restaurant and I, we say to them, hold on, I'll be right back. And we go just a little, my wife and I will go into the closet, Jamie and I will go into the closet, we'll go next door and we'll get our watch and we'll set the timer for 60 seconds. And then we'll go right back in 60 seconds and say to the staff member, um, how long do you think we were gone? And nobody ever guesses a minute. They always guess four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. People have, so last time I've said, you've been gone 10 minutes. So already our mind is, 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 not, is, is out of touch with the perception of, of time to begin with. So when you go to a restaurant, chances are you really weren't there that long as you seem, but it's just, it's one of those things that's human nature. Um, so, and a lot of people don't go into a restaurant and look at their watch and say, it's, you know, 6.15, I'm sitting down now, it's 6.30, my order's going in, and it's 7.15, my, it, it's, all, it's all perception at that point. But so, here's, here's, here's my point with this. Take it up with the manager right then and there. Somebody posted the other day uh, in one of the Elmville groups, I'm having a problem with a local business. Um, who do I speak to in the village? Like, like, who do I go to? And somebody made a comment, the business manager. Like, go to the business manager first. Go to the business owner first. See if they can actually help you and fix it. If they can't, then write the review, do whatever. If you come to me, I will do everything I can to fix it. My staff will do everything they can to fix it. But right now, folks, especially right now, we're coming out of a pandemic. We're not, this isn't a regular restaurant service. This is not like us serving in the street, us doing what we're doing is not regular. Now, sometimes people write reviews. I've had people write reviews before, a bad review on us, because they couldn't get in, they couldn't get a reservation. So they felt it their right that they could go on and give us a one or two star review based upon them calling and saying, well, we're sold out or walking up to my door and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sold out, I have reservations. So they feel sometimes that that gives them the right to give you a one or two star review because they drove 20 minutes or a half an hour to get to you and they're hungry and you can't accommodate them, which really isn't our fault. They didn't call ahead of time. Now, right now we're not taking reservations. It's simple as that because we don't really know day to day how the weather's going to play out. I only have a 20 by 20 tent back here. We're not seating inside. So the four tables that are underneath this tent, I could easily take reservations and book these four tables night after night after night after night right now. But it's, it's, it's so hard to, and sometimes people write a bad review because, because your ta their table wasn't ready in enough time. So if you book a table for five o'clock and these tables are all full and they're here having a good time, right? They're here all having a good time. I can't go to them and say, um, your time is up. I have another table that wants to sit here. It's not proper service. But guests expect that when they're walking in and waiting a lot of times. A lot of people expect that. Well, why aren't they, why haven't they left yet? Well, they, you know, and so they put us in a bad situation where no, I'm sorry, we don't, we, we, I just can't ask people to leave. We can think that each guest is gonna take an hour and a half to eat. Each table's gonna take an hour and a half or two hours. We actually, we actually a lot two hours a time for a guest, guest to eat in the restaurant. So in normal pre-COVID, if you were to walk in in the summertime and you were to see, um, table's empty and you wanted a table, we're gonna say that table's wrapped up for two hours if you're gonna sit down. And if, so if it's five o'clock and I have a 5.30, 5.45 reservation, uh, two hours might be a lot, an hour and a half, right? But two hours, we kind of, if we're taking penciling reservations in, it's six o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 6.30, and, you know, 8.30, so we leave a two hour gap because we don't want we don't want to be in that situation where we're trying to get, have, having people waiting. So we take precautions. So when people walk into the restaurant, they go, well, that table's empty. Why can't I have that table? Well, I have a reservation coming there in 45 minutes. Well, I'll be done in 45 minutes. Your food might not even be out in 45 minutes because it's gonna take 15 minutes for the waiter or waitress for you to decide on what you want. And then it's gonna go into the kitchen and there's gonna be 20 other tables in front of you that your food doesn't come out. It might be a half an hour. So by the time that reservation gets here, you're sitting at a table that they thought to call ahead of a week ahead, a day ahead, eight hours ahead to book that table. And they're not gonna understand why their table's not ready. But a lot of people, it's all about them at the moment. Why can't I do that? Why can't I sit down? And it puts us in a bad situation a lot of times. So right now we're not taking, we're taking zero reservations. It's first come, first serve. Simple as that. If you call the day of, and you, if you can pre-order food, it helps, it facilitates the process faster. Um, now we have, we seat two, four, six, eight. We have like 10 or 12 tables in the street that, that are packed. We have the garden. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. We have 11 tables back here spread out socially distanced. So if I have, if I have 10 tables out there, 11 tables here, and another table up there, I'm at 25 tables. I That's more tables than I have inside my restaurant in a normal time pre, pre-COVID. So we're actually busier than we are pre-COVID on a regular night, and we're turning these tables. But so these two these two two star reviews I got, I have no idea what happened because they just haven't left feedback. Um, so any restaurant, any restaurant that you're going to, any business you're going to, talk just not mine. Anybody's. We make mistakes. I'm the first person that we make mistakes. I mean, uh, uh, we're not perfect. We're not perfect by any means. But I'm willing to fix it. I'm willing totally to fix it so you get what you pay for. And I tell people that because sometimes, sometimes people are hesitant to speak up at restaurants. They'll say to me, well, I didn't want to say anything. But, the, you know, I'm like, well, why didn't you say something? Because you're paying for the food. We'll fix it. You're paying for it. I want you to eat something. And sometimes I insist, like, no, no, your food is wrong. I will fix it. Keep that dish there. We'll start another steak. We'll start another burger. We'll cook another side order. of Whatever it is, it's wrong. Your salt, rice is too salty. We'll make another order of rice right now. It's so simple to do. But people sometimes are afraid to to speak in person. But as soon as they get behind the computer, they're going to type away some bad, bad review and act all big about it. And that's, you know, there's been a couple, a very few instances where, where, you know, people could, they go on and on about these reviews and uh, about a bad review. And I'm like, wow, I spoke to you. I, I was at your table and you told me everything was fine to my face. And then you went online and bashed me. And I, I don't understand that concept. So there's been twice in 18 years I've actually commented back. I wish you would have told me that. I give you a one star for communication because you totally misled me when I was at the table. All it would have taken is just simple like, hey, this was wrong, that was wrong, or while you're eating, this was wrong. Folks, do not be afraid to speak up. You, if you're spending money, we all, we, we all work for our money. So speak up and, and get what you want. Just not at my restaurant, but any restaurant, okay? Don't, don't be afraid, and, but be nice about it. Be nice about it. Don't understand that, hey, the restaurant industry, it's, it's a high volume, high stress level. In the summertime, our every kitchen out there is, you know, 100, 110 degrees in the kitchens. Um, the staff, the staff aren't comfortable to begin with a lot of places just because of the high heat and the high pressure. And it's an honest mistake. My cooks don't show up every day or other restaurants show up every day. And how many steaks can I overcook today? How many, how many pizzas can I burn? They, they don't come in with that mentality. So that mentality is not there, but things happen. Physical mistakes happen. Mental mistakes happen. So just be patient and say, hey, this is, you know, and then if the restaurant doesn't fix it, you have the right to go on. That's my feeling. You have the right to go on and say, hey, you guys were terrible. I did this. I tried to speak to you. You didn't want to listen to me, this and that. And, you know, that's a well-deserved two-star review. All right. Um, and I also don't, don't, this is also a common thing when people do reviews. I've been going there. I've been there 20 times. Um, I've had great food there. This time my food sucked and they give them a one star review. The other 20 times you're there that you loved your food, where are those five star reviews? See a lot, people are just, people are used to being able to say a lot of negative things instead of how to, how to do with the positive things properly. So 20 great times there, you've been coming there for years, all of a sudden you have one bad experience and you're telling the world about your bad experience, but you wouldn't go online to give the place a good rating when you had five or 10 or 20 great experiences there. So sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense why people do that. And again, sometimes people don't speak up at all. They don't speak up at all while they're in the, while they're, while they're in the restaurant. So folks, if you've had, if you've had a great experience at a restaurant lately, whether it's my restaurant or any other restaurant out there, if you've had a great experience anywhere, just go online and drop them a good review. Every restaurant could use a good review right now uh, during this pandemic, um, you know, business wise, uh, morale wise, and if here's here's the best thing, if you can include somebody's name in the review, that's gold. Like, hey, my server John, the bartender Kathy, made my drink so perfect, so friendly. They smiled. If you can list somebody's specific name in a review, that goes a long way with the wait staff, with the with with, with the staff at the restaurant. A long way. We get a lot. We get a lot of reviews where they actually mention like Patrick's name or Cody's name, or they'll say, "I don't know who the guy's name, but the guy with the beard, he took great care of us." When when we tell our wait staff that, their eyes light up. Their eye. It's like it's like because they feel really appreciated that you took the time as a guest to know their name first of all, or know who they were, 
and leave a comment. So if you've been in any kind of experience, not just in my restaurant, but any restaurant out there, any restaurant out there, whether, it was, whether you had an experience two weeks ago, two months ago, two hours ago, two days ago, and it was a good experience, go on and leave them a good review. It will go, go a long way right now. If you've had a bad experience, drop an email. Drop an email to the restaurant, to the manager, and say, hey, I've been there before. It wasn't your normal, normal service. I just wanted to let you know that a few things were off. People do that to us, and I totally appreciate that because it helps us improve. It totally helps us improve. Um, so people, people always, we, we're, we always welcome feedback. Now, as a rest, I, I, we, Jamie and I coach other restaurant owners. We have a, mar a little marketing, a little marketing business where we help other restaurant owners uh, market their business, succeed, and manage their online reputations and stuff like that. And it's, and I always tell restaurant owners or any business owner. Wait 24 hours before you really respond sometimes to these reviews. Because let's face it, this restaurant's my baby. Aroma Time is my baby. 18 years, 18 years in, that's my baby. 17 years in, that's my baby. When I read something negative about my baby that I've created for 17 years, I've poured, you know, everything into this restaurant that I have, energy-wise, financial, emotions, my standards, all that. When I first read something like, your food sucked tonight, and this and that, I get emotional, I get upset. And I want to like fire back, right? I'm like, no, what, no. Sleep on, sleep on it, sleep on it. And we, same thing with the reviews too. Sleep on your experience and then formulate something the next day when things don't mean as much to you or they don't mean the same thing. Because the next day, let me tell you something, the next day after you had a bad experience in a restaurant, it might have been bad, you might, might say, but it doesn't mean your emotions aren't wrapped up in it and you'll be more logic head to, more lo have more logic in your head to write a review. And if you're a business owner, you'll have much more logic to respond back about them criticizing your baby. So you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go walk up to a, a mother uh, of a six month old in a carriage and say, oh, your baby's ugly, your baby's rude or this, that, because the mother would get upset, right? That's their baby, this is my baby, this is my business, but at the same time, I wanna take care of it, I wanna honor everybody who comes in here and make sure that they all get a great experience. And again, like I said, we're not perfect, other restaurants are not perfect. One of the biggest challenges is we, we rely upon staff members, and staff members are dealing with a lot as well. Everybody deals with so much, right? So so you you honestly, like, like have no idea like what somebody's going through. Did they just have a death in the family? Um, you know, did they just, you know, did they just find out that one of their parents got diagnosed with cancer? Did they just find out their spouse was cheating on them? Did they just find some, some like news out? And did they come to work still? And do they still have that on their mind? Some staff members are fantastic with separating the two, really separating the two. And we teach our staff members like, you have to separate, you know? And if you can't separate, you shouldn't be here. But some employees, some people just can't separate the two and they come to work something happened in their life and it's just downhill from there and work perpetuates it and all of a sudden now, now you know, they're taking something out or they're not pay, paying as much attention to the guests like they should be and that's a terrible situation and it's unacceptable and we try to avoid those but that does happen sometimes too. Um, so, you know, um, somebody last year, two years ago, th two years ago after, um, after we were experiencing the death in the family, somebody came to me and started complaining and I was like, I, I, was, I was at a point of like mental exhaustion and I was just like, you know, I'm sorry. And I was just sat there and tears started coming out of my I'm trying my best just to get by right now and this and that. And and their tune changed, like, what's wrong? Well, you know, so this just happened to my, and I was like, I, under, I understand, I'll take care of, and, but then all of a sudden, because things go into perspective a little better. And it's not as an excuse, it's just a perspective. Everybody's going through something different. So um, by you sending an email after the fact to a restaurant, you're actually, you're actually helping them. Um, if the restaurant, is willing to listen, you're actually helping them. So Esteban saying life happens, life does happen. And you know, so here's the thing. We had a, we, we, we had a staff member that wasn't feeling well the other day and said, Psh, you, can't, you can't come in, you, you can't come in. There's no way you can come in, right? Just can't do it. Um, and he agreed. So we actually were short staffed this whole weekend. We had one less person in the kitchen cooking this whole weekend. And I don't know, I, I haven't even spoken to the person, we've been so busy of how they're feeling now and this and that and what's happening. But I said, hey, you know, five days, we'll talk in five days. And, and so we were short one full person. That was a huge strain, a huge burden on our kitchen this weekend to be down one short person. And I told people on Friday night coming in, I'm like, you know what, I'm sorry. Um, we're at capacity right now. And you looked around, there was a table out front, there was a table out back, and I said, I'm sorry, we're at capacity right now. My kitchen is at that sweet spot. I, said, I explained, at that sweet spot. 
where the food's coming in, the food's going out, and I can't, I can't burden the kitchen anymore right now. And I was honest with them. Totally honest, I can't burden the kitchen anymore right now. And maybe that was one of the two-star reviews I got. Maybe that was one of the person thinking, well, gee, what's wrong with this? Why can't we sit down and we drove? Who, know, who knows? Um, because again, it's people that left these two-star reviews didn't leave me any feedback on the review. So I can't even make a legitimate response back like, you know, like, oh, this or that or that. So how's it going? Good, I'll be right with you. So I have somebody here waiting for me. I have a delivery here. So I just wanted to go online, just, just, just tell people about, don't go write a bad review unless you speak to the manager and then they don't do anything, then they deserve it. And go right now, today, go to one of your favorite restaurants that you have not written a review on, that you've had great experiences with, or a restaurant just recently, whether it's mine or somebody else's, and just leave a good review, leave a nice review. If you know the server's name, if you know somebody, the bartender, if you know somebody there, mention their name in the review. There's not, there's nothing like when, 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 um, when our staff sees that, they just their eyes light up. They're, they're, it's a fantastic. All right, folks, that's it. I gotta go and get get some work to do, and I will talk to you later. And hope everybody has an amazing, amazing day. We'll be back Friday, Saturday, Sunday with our lobster bakes out front, twenty five bucks. Another added component to it that's super exciting. And of course, we're open all week long, except for Wednesdays, we're closed Wednesdays. All right, we're gonna talk to you later.